Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 163 of the Sideshade Podcast. You are joining us today for the first part of the series that we've called Keeping Safety Simple. Um, this series is basically designed as a way to help you guys get the right safety systems and all that kind of stuff uh, into place from an OHS, WHS standpoint. Uh, I'm conducting this series with our former guest, Shane Connolly from Keep It Simple Safety. Um, Shane is a WHS guru, and um, you guys may have been familiar with him through some of the comments that come up within the Facebook community, and he has also uh, been on the show many, 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 many moons ago. Uh, we did a series um, on occupational health and safety. Oh, wow, that was all the way back in uh, May of 2016, which I'll post some links to. Uh, within the show notes so you can go check that out in this series here we've dived into i suppose the world of whs a little, in a little bit more granular fashion we've got the first episode which you are here listening to today which is called getting the right safety systems in place um, and the following episodes are responding to incidents correctly and then moving forward after an accident we'll wrap it up so this is the first part, guys. Uh, please make sure you have all this stuff in place. I know it can sound a little bit tedious, but it is super important um, and it can protect you and it can protect your team. So guys, enjoy. And if you do enjoy it, please go and leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you consume your podcasting media. Um, and if you're not already in the Facebook community, make sure you get across there because a lot of these conversations come out of that group. All right, that's all. Let's jump in. The Sightshed Podcast is made possible because of Tradie Web Guys, creators of beautiful websites designed specifically for tradies and contractors. If you're tired of dealing with web designers that have no idea about your industry, then head across to tradiewebguys.com.au and reach out. Like many companies from all over the place, you'll be very glad you did. Giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Hello listeners and welcome back to Toolbox Talks on the Site Shed podcast. Today you are joining me with my co-host Shane Connolly from Keep It Simple Safety. Shane, welcome back. Hi Matt, thanks for having me again. Now Shane, you were a guest on the show all the way back in... God, when was that? that was, oh, I don't remember. It was a long time oh, you ago. You know what? It was it was June 2016. So that was two years ago, pretty much, more or less to the to the week. That's funny. Synchronicity. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, it's good that we got you back on the show because uh, that's a long time to go without health and safety. So let's uh, try and do a cracking job at making an unsexy topic sexy. <laughs> I haven't succeeded really at that yet. But well, I look, am you've got trying. your new microphone now, so you certainly sound like you're uh, – the the what is it the voice of a um, velvet panther? What's that line out of? <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not going there. All right? I'm just not going there. I'll um, tell you a story about that one day when we're not on when air. We're not on air. Yeah, good idea. So Shane, anyway, we're uh, we're here today. We're talking a bit, uh, about OHS, WHS once again, and um, uh, we have titled this series "Keeping Safety Simple," which of course ties into your business, Keep It Simple Safety, and. Um, we're talking about three things. Uh, the first episode is going to be uh, getting the right safety systems in place. And there's, well, as you know, you're part of the community. We've had a lot of conversations recently around systems and procedures, and everyone in the group is pretty mad for them. So I think uh, that is going to be a pretty popular episode. Um, the second episode, we're going to be talking about responding to incidents correctly, which we've never actually done before. So um, I think that's kind of a big thing because, I mean, I've certainly worked in companies where um, people have been injured and it wasn't managed properly. And as we said off air before, like, and it can it can almost be the end of a lot of companies if it's not done correctly. So that'll be a good one. Um, and then the third and final episode, we will be talking about um, how to move the business forward after an incident takes place. So this is exciting. I'm uh, I'm keen to hear your wisdom on these topics. Now, Shane, just before we jump in, for the listeners that are not uh, familiar with you, uh, can you just give us a bit of a rundown to you and to your business, please? Uh, well, I guess my background is pretty varied, like uh, a lot of people in business. Um, I started out uh, a long time ago in IT first, um, and then I've been in safety now for almost 10 years. Worked a lot of big companies, um, 
the high risk stuff, mining, construction. And four years, five years ago, nearly now, we started our own business because the main reason really was because we wanted to make safety simple for people. I, working in the corporate world, everything is very complicated. Um, and it just made sense to me that business didn't really need that. And, and hence the business was born. Simple as that, really. So what sort of stuff do you guys do? We do, well, we do a whole range of different things, but our core business is helping small business, um, you know, trades, small workshops, uh, less than sort of 50 employees to put systems in place, safety systems, policies, procedures, and manage their safety going forward, whether it be in a cloud-based platform or whether it be a paper-based system. Um, we help people put those systems in place, customized for their business and help them to keep on top of things yeah, moving cool. forward. So in, in this first um, episode, Shane, we're going to be talking about getting the right safety systems in place. Now, I imagine that encapsulates quite a vast array of areas to cover and things you know, things that people, business owners need to consider, many of which probably would be quite foreign to people. I mean, I've worked on site before, you know, you do the, obviously you've got your toolbox talks and you've got your danger reports and all that sort of carry on. But what, what, what are some of the, um, I suppose diving into it now, you know, what, who, who are we really speaking to here? Is this more directed at business owners or the site supervisors, foremans, leading hands, that kind of thing? Well, it's sort of for anybody in a position of authority, I guess is the yeah. right way to put it. Um, if you're the owner, yeah. So because it, under the current workplace health and safety laws, certainly in Australia and New Zealand, if you're responsible for managing people, you're part of that system. So, um, so that's when it becomes extra important because it's something that you can be held accountable for mm -hmm. yeah, in a court of law. So that's really who the systems, I mean, the systems are good for a business full stop, but this is more directed at making sure there is a, a way to do things that is the right way, I guess. And I mean, look, there's really a responsibility, I think, on everyone, isn't there, to ensure that you know, the workplace is safe and that your co-workers and colleagues and friends and associates and whatever are operating in a matter that is deemed safe and i mean look i hate to use the you know the, the term common sense but i mean <laughs> a lot of it is common sense isn't it the problem is i suppose common sense isn't overly common well it, the part of the problem is you're right it's not always that common but the other part is that people think of it like a separate entity so when you when i talk about making safety part of your business that's literally what you should try to do. So you have best practice for things like your um, your in invoicing and your accounting. This is best practice for workplace health and safety. So it's trying to incorporate all the things you need into how you do business normally, rather than having an added appendage that you know that is the safety thing. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, why this is important. I mean, obviously, um, you know, we I suppose at the end of the day here we're talking about protecting the business, but I'd like to know a little bit more as to some of the reasons why it's important to have these systems in place, either that being for the purpose of an audit or a builder or the fact that when an incident happens, like why we need to do this? Well, there's a, there are a variety of reasons, but the... And what are they? <laughs> So first and foremost, it is to protect the business. Every business should have policies and procedures to let people know that A, what the expectation is. So sometimes the simplest reason for having this sort of stuff is so that your workers and your managers, supervisors, whoever, know what they're supposed to do if there's an incident or what's meant to happen when you know X, Y, Z happens. That's really the crux of it. Just like you would put a process in place for your invoices, you want to know that if X happens, then Y is the answer. Mm. So out in the field, that's also what people want to know. You know, if a worker finds something that's not right, then what are they supposed to do? Um, you know, and you can't rely on that common sense that you were talking about before because common sense tells you you talk to your supervisor. Right. Having a policy and a procedure just outlines that in big, bold letters that that's what you're meant to do. What's the... um? The framework, Shane, behind, and this is <laughs> the ongoing battle, I think, with policies and procedures in general. But um, you know, what's the the ideal framework behind getting people to comply with these policies and making sure they're following them correctly? And you know, what's the accountability, or what do you I mean? What do you see that works best? Like I said, the the best way 
I mean, a, a lot of this comes from the top in your business. If you talk like about safety like it's the ugly cousin that no one invites to the barbecue, then that's how everybody feels about safety in your business. So leading from the front is the best way to get people to do what you want them to do. Mm-hmm. And, and that goes for more than safety, obviously. Yeah. But that's the crux of it. If you treat it seriously and show that it's serious to you, then other people will treat it seriously too. And so that's the first thing. I mean, giving people access to the systems. Yeah. That's cloud systems are great for that. They, it's always on tap in their phone or their tablet. They can look up whatever they need and encouraging the right response. I'm not a big stick person. I would much prefer people use positive reinforcement rather than the negative reinforcement. So if you see somebody doing the right thing, reinforce it. Right. Bring it up at the meetings. That kind of that's the stuff that really gets people because your system is is a system. Like anything else, you it, it'll only work how effective it is is proportionate to how much effort you make it yeah, uh, put into it making it work. Yep, 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 yep. So I mean, when we're talking about I suppose <laughs> we've called this getting the right safety systems in place. What are the wrong safety systems? That's an excellent question. Thank you. The the wrong safety systems are systems that don't fit your business. So I won't mention any names, but there are lots of places where you can download templates and Uh, systems that you can buy online. And whilst technically they are full of all the right information, if you don't go through and edit it and make it suit your business, then you really just stringing yourself up because if you say that you're going to do x y and z in your business and that's your signed off policy or procedure then that's what you have to do whether it suits your business or not so the first and foremost thing is to have something that suits your business if you don't do confined space work then you don't need any policies and procedures about confined space right but if that's the core of your business then you need more than just a couple of lines you right. need serious you know, policies and procedures around that particular area. So having something that fits your business is the is the real key. And not just because it makes sense to do that, but because it will make the system work better if it fits your business. Of course. And so, you know, you're right. It's the same old story with most things. You can always go and find templates and stuff, but the, the magic really happens when you can take those templates and customize them to your business because then it all becomes relevant and things actually start working. Well, it makes sense to people then. You right. know, people look at these, some of those documents and just don't even bother because it, it's complex and it's hard for them to understand. You know, someone was saying to me the other day that in the construction industry in particular, you're really talking about on average a year 10 literacy level. So mm-hmm. we're not talking about, and, you know, I know a lot of these guys and they're great guys, but they're not scholars. They right. don't want to read what a lawyer's written. Right. They want they want something in plain English that they can understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the other side of having, you know, the right safety systems. It's to, something you can understand as well as everyone else. We interrupt this podcast today to talk to you very quickly about Tradie Web Guys content creation program. That program has been designed specifically for trade-based organizations as a way that you guys as trade business owners can start creating content that enables you to engage better with your customers and your potential customers. It will enable you to build trust and build rapport because what you're doing is you're investing in educating them. Biggest problem that we see with our customers today is that they're not regularly updating their websites. And that's a problem because first of all, the search engines are looking for that. And second of all, potential customers are also looking for it. Trading Web Guys content creation program has been specifically designed to help you get regular, relevant content on your website consistently every month. We know that it's hard when you're out there on the tools, and we know that sometimes you don't always have the time to be able to do these things yourself. So we're taking it off your hands for you. It's a service that we're offering for you guys. We want to make sure that you're getting this done because we know how important it is. Anyway, head across to tradywebguys.com.au forward slash content, fill in the form, and one of our representatives will come back to you. Shane, with um, safety systems, like when we talk about, um, you know, um, standard operating procedures and business um, systems or policies or whatever, um, they typically refer to 
like roles and responsibilities within an organization, which more more often than not stems down from the organizational chart, or it should anyway. You know, you've got your org chart, you've got your departments, you've got your roles, you've got your responsibilities, et cetera. Is it a similar framework for the um, safety systems or are the safety systems more of a canvas? No, that your safety system should be exactly follow on in that. In the ideal world, you would have job descriptions that encompass those roles mm-hmm. and responsibilities as well as having them in your you know, safety manual or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. Um, because that's the key part is to outline what people's responsibilities are in the business. So if you're a worker, you have to follow the procedures. If you're a manager, you have to um, enforce them and monitor them, You know that yeah. kind of stuff. So is that kind of, when you say that, do you mean um, relevant to uh, the job role or the task at hand are you are you sort of more referring to it's more the job role so okay. you i mean as part of your induction for example our inductions include your responsibilities um, inside the business so and and in general everybody has the same sort of core responsibilities to follow the procedures to report incidents to do this to do so on so everyone has those and then if you're a manager or a supervisor you sort of get a few extra ones on top of that um, in general obviously I've worked in trades before and I, and I found that a lot of the well back then mind you it was it was a fair while ago but albeit like the, a lot of the policies and a lot of the you know, things that we were doing, safe work method statements and all that kind of stuff, it all typically referred to an individual task that was being carried out. And then that task wasn't necessarily wasn't necessarily um, handed to people within certain job roles. It was just more anyone that's actually doing that task. <laughs> that could have been the apprentice, it could have been the tradesman or whatever. Yeah. And that, so that's more um, in a, a task specific risk management. So a SWIMS right. or a safe operating procedure or safe work instruction, those type of documents, which are important parts of having a safety system, do refer to, although SWIMS can have multiple levels of responsibility, so it can be assigned to the you know, this job foreman or the operators or the equipment, um, you know, people who operate the plant. So yeah. you can specify, but in general... Yes, they are more specific to the task, but again, the same the same responsibilities are encapsulated across the business as far as workplace health and safety goes. There's not you don't um, disregard those core responsibilities for a specific task. They are just and 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 by default, they are not mentioned specifically in that task. So when you well, for example, in our system, when you do the induction, you're your responsibilities are explained to you. They permeate through all parts of the business, irrespective of what you're doing or where you're doing it. Okay. So, in regard to, um, and I know that you, you know, we, you, you mentioned you know, templates and all this kind of stuff. But being that we're talking about getting the right safety systems in place, what are some of the fundamental systems that every single business needs to have? Um, as a as a foundation. So every business should have, at the very minimum, a workplace health and safety policy. Okay. So a, a policy is just a statement of your position as a business. So in effect, you're saying workplace health and safety is important to us. What we're going to do as a business is X, Y, Z. What employees need to do is you know A, B, C, and that's how we're going to achieve good workplace health and safety practice. Yeah, gotcha. Um, so generally like a one-pager sort of thing. And then behind that, to put the system behind that piece of paper, so to speak, you have a workplace health and safety manual or a safety management plan or any number of other names that it's called. And it literally outlines your thing, how you're going to manage risk, what to do if there's an incident, what to do if there's an emergency, what happens when somebody's injured and they're returning to work. All of these kind of things have like a well, anything from a paragraph to several pages, depending on your business, mm-hmm. um, about what happens in that situation. Um, so it's literally like a, a handbook. So if A happens, then do B. You yeah. know. So and once you've got that in place, then you really have got the crux of it sorted out. You can get much more elaborate and much more complex, and, and add in things like safe work procedures and. Some businesses require swims for high risk work, mm-hmm. or you can go, you know, above and beyond and get certified systems, which are to Australian standard or international standard, if you want to. Okay. Which are much more complex and, you know, seriously audited against. But 
But that, that's the crux, the policy, and then you have procedures based around individual parts of the business, like risk management. I'm curious, Shane, like, I mean, obviously, we're talking largely to, well, pretty much entirely to trade-based businesses. However, you know, in today's landscape, a lot of trade-based businesses have, um, you know, a, a large component of their organization, which is not out there swinging hammers and on the tools. How does the um, safety systems and procedures apply to, um, say, a more managerial office-based scenario? Well, it, the beauty of having a proper or the right safety system is that it applies across the board. So the manual handling procedure is the same whether you're in the office or whether you're out in the field. You know, don't pick up something you can't handle. You know, use a trolley if you have to get help. The idea is that you don't have to have two separate systems. Right. The premise behind the whole thing can be used across any environment. And that's the beauty of having, well, a simple system mm-hmm. is that it, it's not, you can apply the same procedure no matter where you are because it makes, it actually makes sense to you rather than being, you know, some elaborate thing that mm-hmm. most likely nobody's going to read anyway. And that's a, that's pretty accurate, isn't it? I mean, look, let's be honest. I mean, that goes for, I mean, systems in general, um, you know, until like, like getting people to, to be accountable to these systems and making sure that they're, you know, they're constantly um, up to speed with how things are supposed to be running. I mean, that is a big battle. Yeah. I mean, you you know, we've in, in the course of our business, we come across, you know, people who have had other systems in place. And, you know, a lot of our competitors, for example, you would have a hundred page safety management plan. <laughs> now, even as a boss, I would struggle to read 100 pages yeah. um, of a safety management plan. Ours is about 25 because at some point you, you know, we've all done training and we all know that how big people's attention span is. Mm-hmm. And so you've got to cater for that and get your message across in a very succinct way that is easy for people to get. And like I said, if you customize it, you can add bigger sections in that are more particular to what you do. But for the basic stuff, you've got to keep it really simple. Mm. Because people simply won't I, – I've seen people sign stuff so many times and not read it because it's too complex for mm-hmm. them. So, you know, they run the gauntlet, which, you know, is crazy, but that's human nature. So, Shane, if we, um, you know, if we do get these right systems in place, what, what are some of the things that we can inevitably avoid? So the first thing that you can avoid is n- not knowing what to do when something does go wrong, especially in small businesses like all of the listeners we have generally, you don't have an incident every week and you don't have a workplace health and safety person to deal with it. So you are generally, the first thing you want to know is what the hell do I do? So that's the first thing that a system does. The second thing is tells you how to recover from it. So what to do next, how to manage the injury or whatever it might be. If worse comes to worst and the regulator comes and investigates you um, because it's a serious incident or it involves a you know an apprentice or whatever reason, then it literally protects your business because they will come and investigate. They will have a checklist of things that they are required to, you know, that you're required to have, a policy, procedures, is are they been inducted? Do they have PPE? Have they been trained? And if you can show all of those things, then mm. you know, you may still get a fine or something like that because for whatever reason they come up with, mm. but it will be nothing compared to what you would have got if you had no systems in place, and they will just literally throw the book at you. I know one of my um one of my good friends. He's uh, like a like a project manager or project engineer or something on one of these on one of these construction companies, and he they had a project out in Perth where the apprentice it was tools down basically. It was like they'd finished for the day, and the apprentice left his I think it was his phone up on the roof or something, and um he. Everyone was ready to go. And he's like, oh, I've left a, left a phone up there. And he basically ran back into the work site, jumped up on the roof, no harness, ran along the framework, fell, killed himself. And he's, he's only a kid, you know, he's like 16 or something. And it was a massive, obviously, a massive issue. But I mean, they, they're a big company. They have all those procedures and stuff in place. But it was still like, it was still an intense investigation, you know, on, on them. As, and, and, and when you look at that, you think, well, okay, the kid bloody climbed up on a roof with no harness and ran across it. Like, you, there's got to be a line there where you say, okay, we can't – there's a line there, right, when you think, okay, well, the business can obviously do everything they can to try and protect people. But when people do something stupid, like you can't yeah. protect stupidity, can you? 
Well, no, you can't, but you can protect your business from it. Right. So right. Have, the first thing that investigator goes and looks at is all of that paperwork, um, all that stuff that irritates people. Mm. You know, like I said before, they inducted their policies, procedures, all this sort of stuff. So they, because what they are trying to establish is your intent as a business. So if you if you don't have any policies and procedures, you always shoot from the hip. The reason they will come after you is because you're it's clear that your intent is not to do the right thing. You've made no effort. You've tr- never tried to have systems in place, and so and and the judge will tell you that when you end up in front of him. If you try, if you can prove that you've tried everything you can to have systems in place, you've trained people, all of that sort of stuff, then. Yes, stupidity still happens, but it then is not reflected back on your business. Right. And that's really the difference between uh, having systems and not having systems. Yeah. We've had clients who have been investigated for incidents, not serious stuff, but um, and after the investigator comes along, who is not a friendly man, who is not your friend, <laughs> they are different from the, the regulators that you normally see who do the inspections. The investigators are a very serious breed. And so they come in and they just go through your business with a fine tooth comb. Um, they have no, they have nothing, nothing about them cares about your business, your livelihood, your children, any of that stuff. All they are there to do is find out the facts. Yeah. And so when you've got systems in place, those facts are pretty apparent. And it's pretty easy for them to get to that conclusion. And then, like I said, it may not mean that you never that you get away with with no slap across the wrist, but it, it will be nothing compared to what would happen if you don't have the systems. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, let's wrap this one up. Um, Shane, on your website, um, the listeners out there, you can head across to keepitsimplesafety, all one word, .com.au. Um, there's a free online um, WHS assessment there, which they can go and um, partake in. And there's also, are you still running a newsletter? Uh, yeah, and uh, that online assessment, by the way, will literally test you for your system. So if you get on there and you get five questions in and you realize that you're really not answering the questions well that's a pretty good indication but you will get a mark at the end okay cool well um, i'll post some links to that in the show notes but um let's wrap this one up shane and let's come back with the second part where we're talking about responding to incidents correctly i think that will be a interesting conversation one of which i'm sure most people (laughs) would have no idea but anyway that's good thanks fate um anything else you want to add to that one no uh, i'm looking forward to the next one all right that's all listeners that is a wrap Thank you for listening to another episode of Toolbox Talks. If you're liking what you hear, then you can head across to the siteshed.com where you can join our community by signing up to our Toolbox Talks. Uh, You'll get sent a weekly notification, which is basically a highlight of everything that we've spoken about during that week, along with any other industry news that may be relevant or specific to the trades. If you're enjoying the show, you can head across to iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud where you can leave us a review. Uh, That would be fantastic, and all the reviews get read out in the show. Uh, Likewise, if you have any friends or colleagues that you think would benefit from the show and the, the episodes that we create, then please go ahead and share it with them.